Hey, it's Jordan. Uh, delighted to be joined by Tommy Chong, a legendary yes. actor, comedian, uh, and all things uh, marijuana uh, legalization advocate. Uh, and you also sell your own products, uh, including CBD, which we'll get into. Uh, but it is it is 420. So I wanted to start with um, your thoughts that in the year 2022, uh, we're still talking about trying to legalize uh, marijuana federally. <laughs> well, you know, you got to remember, you know, the feds, uh, you know, they, they, in fact, we started off the FBI with uh, liquor prohibition, you know. And so when uh, people said, okay, we can't prohibit uh, alcohol because we need it for our, our recreation and for our health or, in, or even to ruin our health, uh, then they had to find another one and they picked marijuana because it was a, they could kill two birds with one stone. It can be something that they could, uh, uh, that the people want, that they could uh, regulate, so-called, and, and make some money. And they also found out that they could, uh, may, if they made it illegal, now they could uh, really uh, kill two birds with one stone by attacking minorities, uh, you know, as uh, white supremacists do, and um, and 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 then uh, make that substance, uh, you know, put a price on it so they can make more new, more money off that too. It's all about the money, and uh, and we're, we're sort of like. Uh, you know, just riding it out, riding it out, waiting till people get uh, come back to their senses. You know, because they they the humanity kind of goes in and out. You know, as as uh, as we progress. A L- little fun. Uh, if you could, uh, you know, light up a little uh, cannabis with one uh, modern day politician, who would it be? Politician? Hmm. Uh, Joe Biden. Oh man, he needs to get out so bad. <laughs> oh, poor Joe. <laughs> I just send us, you know, obviously. <laughs> a hunter, a hunter gets high. Uh, unfortunately, Hunter had a, a opioid, pro- some kind of alcohol, opioid, some some kind of addiction. But uh, yeah, no Joe. Joe, need, Joe needs to get high. Yeah, Joe's, Joe's there. Uh, but he, he's not... Not quite, you know. He still got his foot on the, the 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 politician thing, you know. I mean, that's why. I mean, if Joe had hit, he would have first thing he would have come in and rescheduled weed, you know, because because that scheduling is is one that's kind of stopping everything from the flow, you know, the scheduling and the fact that they got these draconian sort of packaging laws, you know. But you got to have kid-proof things for a thing you used to buy in a baggie. You know, here's a dime bag. It was in a bag. There was, was no all this plastic and shit. You got to rip apart. And you know, actually, what I, I joke about it, but it's kid-proof packaging. But you need a kid to open it for you. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, there's uh, if, if, if that's who really needs to get high, it, it, Joe. Well, it's interesting you say that because, I mean, uh, JFK, it's been reported by many, uh, dabbled in some psychedelics and that at the same time that he was uh, moving towards an ending the Cold War, uh, getting troops out of Vietnam. Uh, I don't know if there was a connection, but he was looking towards peace uh, when he was uh, dabbling with psychedelics. Totally, totally with peace. Yeah, that's what it gives you. Yeah, it's not. And you. by the way, you don't dabble. It, maybe if you're candid, you can call it dabbling. No, when you take a hit of acid, there's no dabbling. Right. <laughs> you are dabbled. Have you ever done acid? No. You haven't? Okay. Well, you, you got something to look forward to. My suggestion is make sure you have a guide, someone that you really tr- love and, and trust and that will will take you through it. But, uh, oh, yeah, you you got lots to look forward to because really psychedelic, well, especially with, it, it works different on different people. I took acid the same time my organ player, or piano player, uh, brother ex-brother-in-law, my first wife, Bernie. Bernie and I both took 
pass it. It was called Try This. <laughs> they had no name for it. What's it? What is this? Just try it. And so we tried it. We each had, I took mine on a, a sugar cube, and, and we both did. We each took a sugar cube. And uh, Bernie sat in front of the mirror the whole time and just looked at the mirror, looked at himself the whole time. I, it hit me and I had to go outside. And I went outside and I sat under a cherry tree. And, uh, and uh, uh, the, the world came to me. In fact, I, I do that. I, 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 I started doing that, just sitting and then letting the world come to you. You know, I did that with, uh, my brother was a scuba diver, you know, a deep sea diver. And he lived on, right on, on the ocean, on, on the deep cove, it's, it was called. And so I would take his gear, put it on with the tank, and then I'd go down just 12, 15 feet, put a rock on my lap, and just sit there and become a fish or, or, or a coral reef. And then within seconds, the fish would come swimming by. You know, and the big fish would come, and the things that you didn't know were alive. All of a sudden, they, they come up and they're alive, and, and and you see. And now all I have, to, all you had to do is become part of the, of the scenery. You see, and they do that when they're uh, uh, scuba diving, shooting the, you know, with the with the with the air, uh, for for food. You know, you want to fish, you sit there with the with the with your. Uh, gun ready to to shoot when you see the fish you let it come right up and then you and then you got it but yeah i uh i found what asset did to me well first of all if you're going to do it with a partner be prepared to be with that partner for the rest of your life hmm. because I, I was married i was very happily married but i had a friend she wasn't even a girlfriend because she liked me because I was married and because she was so beautiful that she, that she didn't want to be stuck with boyfriends. And so, so I was the older guy that she knew and, and we were just friends and we just le- liked each other. But then she was my asset guide. Uh, the, the second time I took acid, First time I just sat under the cherry tree. The second time I took acid, well, we literally consummated our love. And uh, nine months later, <laughs> we got a little girl <laughs> out of the parking. <laughs> well, uh, it would be an honor. You know, I'll definitely fly out for uh, Tommy Tommy Chong to be my first guide. So we'll have to talk about that. I would. I would be honored. I Absolutely. would be honored. And uh, obviously, uh, I, I don't think you were the biggest advocate of President Biden, uh, but he can at least lower this from a, a Schedule One drug. He has the power to do that. He has yeah. not done that. Uh, no. What are your no. What are your thoughts on Biden, who obviously we know uh, from the good old days of the '80s was a father of the crime bill, which has jailed a, a whole generation oh. of black people, mostly for uh, things like marijuana, cocaine, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's his job. Well, you got to remember, he's a white Catholic, you know, and not to uh, disparage uh, uh, anybody's religion, but it, when when they use it as a uh, you know a means to suppress other people, then uh, you, we have to talk about it. You know, and they become fair game, and uh, and, and like the, if, if you well, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to open that can of worms, but uh, it's something. You know what it is? We're dealing with ignorance. It's pure ignorance to to, to even suggest that uh, cannabis is not a medicine is ridiculous on its face because any research going back thousands of years. You know, the Chinese have recorded it 3,000 years ago, where even longer, I think about more like 5,000 years ago, uh, when, as long as we had, uh, what do you call it, the ability to, to write a word, you know, the written word, the Chinese have always used it as medicine. It's been used by the indigenous people on the planet for thousands, if not millions of years as a, a herb, a medicine for various ailments. Uh, and uh, and it wasn't until, uh, you know, America 
with its racist policies, you know, with the slavery in the in the South. And, uh, you know, it was uh, part of that whole white supremacy uh, drive, you, you know, to find things that minorities uh, did and then made them illegal or made them too pricey, uh, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and, and, and that's the way it's always been. And, and, and when, if you look at what the, the substitute, because when you think about the indigenous people, uh, they, they were the ones that turned the, the Christian world on to smoking cigarettes, <laughs> tobacco. It was like kind of like a revenge <laughs> trip, you know. Of course, the tobacco they were smoking back then was healthy because it was herbs and it was probably had a lot of uh, mar- uh, cannabis in there too, <clears throat> you know, besides the other herbs. Uh, I, I, I kind of took a, I went in, in, into the indigenous uh, area when I was in prison. Uh, we had an a, a, a organization called the, the uh, Sweat Lodge, and which is all pure Lakota native uh, uh, health uh, it was there actually there they proved to the courts the federal courts that the sweat lodge was their mode of uh, of uh, religion and so we were mandated to have a sweat lodge in our in the prison and which was a, a lifesaver you know because the sweat lodge uh, provided many many uh, uh, therapeutic uh, uses for us when we were in there. Now, we couldn't smoke uh, without penalty of, uh, you know, getting uh, thrown in the hole. When I say smoke, we couldn't smoke uh, uh, anything, actually, especially marijuana. But uh, tobacco was uh, kind of outlawed in, in the prisons. You right. know, at one time, it was the, the, it was the way people... Uh, conducted business, you know, money. They use cigarettes as money. But that they outlawed that. And the prisons also outlawed the weightlifting, you know, because uh, the prisoners were getting too big. They were having steroids smuggled in. And, and so the prisoners were getting huge because all they did all day was pump iron. And, and the guards couldn't handle them, so they had to outlaw that. But, yeah, uh, it's just the, the weight. Uh, supremacist society that we we grown up the puritan i think they called them puritans at one stage and they were the ones that set all the rules you know especially the anti-alcohol anti-cigarette anti anything that looked like fun you know even even the dancing isn't that cra- crazy back in the day uh the indigenous people they did the ghost dance mm-hmm. which was really a marathon dance around the fire uh, you know, because they had to do something with all that energy they had. And uh, and then the authorities outlawed the ghost dance. It's crazy. Uh, you know, they, they were. And, and now we're at the remnant. We're at the back end of that, that right. kind of a society. And so eventually uh, we will have the marijuana or the cannabis laws back where they used to be, which is no law. Right. Let me ask you, because uh, the difference between uh, the prohibition of uh, alcohol uh, back in the early uh, was that 20th century, uh, big pharma was not as big <laughs> then and was not uh, purchasing our politicians back then like they are now. I mean, we just saw a pandemic where still uh, we're now seeing uh, the government is not funding uh, COVID treatment for uninsured people now. Uh, we also saw that President Biden would not use his executive authority to take over the patents of Moderna, Pfizer, to share the formula with the rest of the world. Can you kind of talk about the big pharma factor here? Obviously, marijuana legalization uh, would probably not be so great uh, in terms of uh, their products because more people would have uh, other options for everything from back pain, uh, autoimmune issues, uh, nervous system, cancers. Uh, Can you kind of talk about the role big pharma plays here? Again, it's the greed, greed pharma. It's, it's not so big pharma, it's the greed pharma, greed. They're the ones that sold the Oxycontin, heroin, heroin, synthetic heroin, you know, and they had it, they, they made billions of money, billions of dollars, you know, but that's all evil money. 
and, and no matter how you look at it, you know, uh, I, I do a lot of podcasts where I, where I, I give spiritual talks, and uh, and you know, there the way um, the government, so called, you know, the uh, certain people in, like you say, government, government by nature is controlled by big money or big pharma, be it big farmer or big agricultural or, or the oil industry as it's going down now. You look at what's going on in the world now, uh, the, the war in Ukraine, well, any war from the, the first, second world war was mainly about oil, energy. You see, and and uh, that's how we got Japan in, in, into the war because uh, we put an embargo on their oil, and and, and so you Japan couldn't get oil, so they joined the war. You know, they said thank you, burn, bomb the hell out of uh, of uh, Pearl Harbor, and, and so they got in. And then the Germans, uh, they would have been happily conquering everything had they gone after the oil. Uh, uh, fields in in uh, in Europe, but instead, instead, old Hitler headed right for Moscow, and 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 he he tried to do what still Napoleon hasn't done. It looks like Putin's not going to be able to do. You can't conquer those that area. You know, it's 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 too vast and too crazy. But it's all about greed. The the fight, the, the what we're doing now is all about greed. But on the other hand. And this is what I try to tell, uh, you know, my, my, my people, is that you can't have good without bad. You know, you can't have good without evil. You know, you got to have both because we live in a uh, physical environment. You know, the world, uh, this universe that we live in is very physical. And anything physical is always undergoing change. And the change is, is always uh, uh, full of violence. There's all kinds of violence going on now. Uh, much like when you, when you cook a meal, you know, you use violence to cook that meal. You can take a nice, quiet carrot and some potatoes and, and then cut them up. And then stick them in a pot full of water and then stick that water on the stove, that pot on the stove, and then turn up the heat. And, and now, you know, the violence, the heat, the water heats up, boils, and it changes the chemical structure uh, of the food that we eat. Now, you don't need to do that to cook it, but uh, humans, we, we do it because we can make it taste better, more easier to, to swallow. You know, uh, and, and so there's violence in the physical world that you, you have to have because you can't have up without down. You, right. you need that opposite. And so what we have, what we're finding out how to do is kind of walk that tightrope in between too much violence and too much peace, you know, right. <laughs> and, and we just walk that thing and we learn the whole point of this physical universe that we live in is that we're here to learn. And that's why our lifespan doesn't reach much more than say 80, 80 some odd years or, you know, I mean, there are people that live to be a uh, hundred and so on, but, uh, but, uh, you know, they're existing. It's not so much living. <laughs> they're just alive, you know? And so we're, when we're, I, I look at it this way, when we're here in our physical form, we're here, we're going to school. And, and the school that we're studying, de, we're determined, we determine it ourselves. In, in, say, in, the, in our spiritual state, which, by the way, is eternal. You know, we are eternal beings. And we're only here in our human form long enough to learn a lesson. And then each time we come back, we evolve or devolve <laughs> or, or yeah, dissolve or evolve or dissolve. We either go up or down depending on what, what lesson we need to learn at the time. And, and this is what I learned and this is what I found out. And I found out that you can't, uh, uh, if you come to these understandings, which, I have, which I've done and, 
uh, quite a few mystics and uh, you know holy people and uh, prophets and people have come to the, the conclusion you know that that this is the the violent, the violent physical world we live in is we're here really to adjust to learn to evolve and to and and evolve upward you know we we keep getting better and better at at what we're doing and and, and if you look at just like my lifetime uh you, you, you know i'm 80 i'll be 84 this birthday and i've i was born really the almost to the day that hitler started his war in 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 europe uh 1938 and so i've gone through i don't know countless wars and here i am at, at, you know at the en end of my journey and uh, nothing new <laughs> more wars more wars coming on but if right. you, but but you need you need that we right. need that and, and and you have to accept it now the way the, the we got rules because when you go to school there's always rules you know you need rules in order to have uh, order and you need order in order to uh, be able to uh, be educated you know you can't be educated if everything's in chaos so so we need rules to live by in our physical world and that's why all the holy books they have those rules, right. and and if you follow the rules, uh, if you follow the, the this is what I found, if you follow the rules that the simplest rules, you know, like the Lord's Prayer to me is one of the simplest forms of uh, of instruction that there is on the planet, because it tells you everything you really need to know, if you are on that path. Like if you're looking for that, if, if this is what you're looking for, you know, the, the, the answers all around, are all around, you know, but it depends on why we're here as to how much you're going to learn. Now, for some miracle or, or blessing, I was put here with this urge to, to explore uh, that world, the spiritual world you know the uh, the religious side of, of things like for instance when i was um, eight years old we were living in the country we, we were very primitive we were like we as we found out i i'm eight percent native and we were living like native people uh, in a house without indoor anything we had no we had outdoor plumbing uh we had uh, carry our water from a, a, a pump a well uh, we had chopper wood for the wood burning uh, cook stove that heated the whole house. And this is Calgary, Alberta, where the temperature would go down to below zero for like six months. And so we survived. I survived like 10 uh, winters in Calgary. Uh, but when I was eight years old, uh, a car appeared on the field one my brother and I were walking on and 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 it was full of missionaries and they're looking for kids to take to summer camp church camp you know and they said would you boys like to go to camp and of course my brother and I yes <laughs> what's camp <laughs> where is it and so we had to drive back to my house get our permission from my mother and and then we were allowed to go to camp well my brother he it was an adventure to him you know there's a lake and you have trees to climb and, and all sorts of mischief to get into. Me, on the other hand, I went right into the the, the books and the in the in the learning about Jesus and learning about the Bible and learning about how to pray and all those things. And I ate it up. I ate it up. I I couldn't get enough of it. And because I was, you know, by nature, I was quiet. I, I never had much to say. My brother was four years older than me, and uh, and that's quite a, a an age group, you know. Like he was like really the older big brother, and I was mm -hmm. like the little guy. And so, I, I, I I've been on this 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 spiritual journey uh, uh, for uh, my my entire life basically, and and what I learned at that camp 
I, I still live by by it today, especially the Lord's Prayer. Because if you look at the Lord's Prayer scientifically, you will under you will see the message, you know, like our Father who art in heaven, right there, tells you that our Father, all of us, is our He's our Father. And he's in heaven. He's not on earth. He's in heaven. Ha but his name, hallowed be thy name. That's the first clue you get is that that name, just the thought of the Father, is enough to give you protection. And what I mean by protection is that all the evil forces that are out there wait waiting for candidates to come and to be taken on those evil trips, you're, you're protected right away. If you just mention or think of the Father who art in heaven, right. you know, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. In other words, it's his kingdom come, and it's thy will be done. It's his will be done. Now, a lot of times you look at disasters and accidents and, and things that seem to be horrible um, at the time. And you wonder what kind of God would do this and blah, 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 you know. But if you look at the fact, uh, forever and ever, amen, let you know that forever, that we're eternal beings. So all we are here to do is study uh, our, our whatever we're put here to do, to study it, to learn it, and then to take it with us, take the good with us in, into the, into the into the next uh, semester of school. Hmm. You know that's a good segue because I'm sure you've noticed. Uh, you know times are tough for a lot of people. Uh, mental health uh, problems are really bad. Uh, they've gotten worse during the pandemic. Uh, people are facing eviction. Uh, rents are going up 30, 40 percent. I interview just working people who tell me they're suicidal. Uh, and uh, basically, as that happens, the stock market's through the roof. <laughs> uh, landlords are getting richer. Banks are getting richer. Big farmers getting richer. Can you kind of talk about the mental health crisis and, frankly, uh, the benefits of not only marijuana, but uh, um, a CBD, hemp products. I know uh, you have a lot of those products in your store. Yeah. Well, what, what, what cannabis does, it goes right to the brain. We have receptors in our, in our brain that uh, we're the only creatures. I, I'm quite sure uh, horses and animals have, have the same receptors. You know, anything uh, living has a, the, the, those receptors, but the cannabis and, and see what cannabis does and CBD does. CBD is just the, the uh, uh, part of the plant that doesn't have the THC, which which will give you hallucinations or, or put you on a, a psychedelic trip. But CBD doesn't. But what it does, it goes right to the brain and it calms the brain. It calms everything. See, settles down. Because if you're when you can't do anything when you're agitated. See, when you're, when you're agitated, uh, you, the, a lot of your body functions don't work, you know, like your immune system gets held up if, if you're in a fight or flight state, state, you know, if you're worried about anything, you know, like you say, mental health, because mental health really is the mind going at bat, bat shit crazy. You know, your mind goes into these areas where, where all you see is horror, like a horror movie, you know. And, and it's right into your, your, your mind because those thoughts, and by the way, those are the evil spirits that indigenous people talk about, you know. And if you notice the, uh, the indigenous people, they, they use the medicine man. And the medicine man, like in the, the Lakota tribe or a lot of the native tribes, uh, they are the ones that are what they call touched by God. And a lot of times they are the transgender they're the gay uh, ones in the family because gay and transgender has been on earth ever since humans have been on earth. Because uh, if you can think about it, it can be realized. You see, everything can be realized on, on, on this planet. There's no, uh, like, like 
there's parts of the Bible that get very homophobic, you know, like Noah's Ark is a, is a great example of a, of a, of a, a written, it's fictional, you know, as much as uh, the evangelicals like to think it, that everything in the Bible was like really happened, but no, it's imaginary. It was imagined by writers, you know, and, and they were homophobic writers because they had everything lined up, man, woman, you know, male giraffe, male, uh, female giraffe, male monkey, female monkey, you know, they're all getting on that boat and he's going to sit, you know, it's very simple when you think about it, kind of crack ship because he sailed around with all these animals. They didn't mention anything about the food, what they're eating, but they're out there for a long time. And, and if it was for real, that, that would be a stinky boat, boy, I'll tell you. But, but what I'm saying, and also in, in Noah's Ark, there's a, a very gay story about Ham and his father. Ham took advantage of his naked father. So it's a very, very homo thing. But that's in the Christian Bible. And you've got sex, thousands, if not millions of people that believe on all that, all that crap, you know, and because even, even, even what they did with Jesus, especially nowadays, this is Good Friday. This is when he supposedly rose from the dead and, you know, he came back, you know, the, what the Christians believe or, or some of the Christians do. But in, in reality, Jesus never, ever, ever said he was a Christian. He never thought that like a Christian. Jesus was a Jew from the day he was born to the day he died. In fact, the, he was called the king of the Jews as a sarcastic, it was a sarcastic sign that they put above him. And, and, and what the Romans did, they co-opted Christianity because Christianity was becoming the most popular religion on, on, on the planet. And so rather than, you know, sticking with their idol worshiping, they said, oh, OK, OK, now, OK, now we decided that now we, we own Christianity now. And so we're going to have popes which is uh you know the caesar or what do you call a guy uh you got popes you cardinals you got bishops you got all these guys and uh and oh and you got to have the altar boy don't forget the altar boy because historically as much as they preached about the evils of homosexuality historically the little boy uh try was was normal uh living back then you know don't forget these are desert tribes you know and and that's why a lot of the livestock were nervous <laughs> when the horny shepherds would come around and the young boys young boys in the arab culture and a lot of the the cultures back east and that they were fair game english english were the ones that had the cabin boy in the on the ships all of a sudden you got a cabin boy on a ship and his only job was to take care of the captain, bring him his coffee or his mug or something. So, so we're going coming out of that sort of draconian, weird, homophobic, uh, racist, white racist, because there's a lot of white racism in England. That's where it started, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you know, England's were, were the ones, you know, when they conquered India and that, you know, they they almost enslaved the people. They, they did it ec economically, for sure, you know, where they were charging them for their own salt uh, that grew up on, on their on the shores, you know. So so there's a lot of and, and we're coming out of that. We're, we're, we're slowly coming out of that now. And you got guys like me, you know, talking about stuff that if I were to talk about this just even a few years ago uh, there would no I would have no audience or right. I would I would be uh, in court or in jail or somewhere you know but now I'm free to do it I'm free to do it because now like like you say the cannabis is coming out there and by the way the other thing that cannabis does it puts you in a spiritual state of mind now a lot of people uh, especially in the in the culture, you know, uh, there's there's a 420 culture, which is what we're talking today, and and part of the 420 culture is to get as stoned as you can, 
smoke a ton of weed, you know, get high, and then you talk about what, 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 oh, man, I, I, I would smoke Tim, you know. Uh, I, Willie Nelson you can outsmoke Snoop Dogg, you know. It's it, the, uh, like, people, for some reason, they, they like to make a make it a, a contest out of it, you know. Who can lift the most weight or who can smoke the most dope, you know. Well, I, I go back to the jazz musician. You know, I had a very good friend, uh, John Hendricks, Hendrick Lambrick Hendricks and Ross, and he sang and wrote the best songs all his life. I think he died in his 80s or something. He smoked weed every day, but he smoked the tiniest little amounts. He would take little balls of hash and he'd put it in a menthol cigarette filter because he didn't smoke cigarettes and he didn't really smoke weed, but he smoked, he needed the hash in order to give him that spiritual quality that you get in order for him to sing and become as great as he did. And, and so more than smoking a ton, I've always preached the less you smoke, the better, because the sooner you get to, you know, hearing God or seeing God, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. Some people do it with meditation, with, with no help. Me, I do it with cannabis. Mm -hmm. I, I can smoke up cannabis and I can go right into that state and I can do it even without smoking anything because the, the body memory remembers all that stuff. And, and, and just like, like I said about, about God, you know, in the prayer, you know, hallowed be thy name. I tell people now that you don't have to do all these rituals or even even meditation. You don't have to have a quiet room and, you know, and close your eyes and maybe have the right music playing and all that stuff. And you don't need any of that. All you need to do is change your thought in your head. And so that's what Nelson Mandela did when he was in prison. You know, he was in there for what? 14 years, 15 years, hard labor, but he always had God on his mind, see? And when you have God on your mind, that's who you are. And so everything that, you know, thy will be done, everything that God has, it becomes yours. And so now you have this ability to understand because you get wisdom. And, and then all of a sudden, that's all writers write. Or, or or musicians write. Myself, I write songs. I was never a songwriter. And yet, because I, I was in the right state of mind, I wrote a song that Diana Ross recorded, that Bobby Taylor recorded. I had it was on the hit parade. It brought me to to fame and, and now fortune, you know? And it was all because of my thought process. You see, and that's what, what that's what the the what wise people of the planet, you know, the Deepak Chopras, all of them, they they but they can't give everybody the answer. What they can give, it, they can show them the way, and the way the Chinese call it the Tao. It's a way of life, and this is what I've been trying to do, and this is what. Our product, this is what our CBD product does. It calms the mind. And when your mind is calm, then your immune system works. You, all your intuition works. Everything works when your mind is calm. Because think about it. You can't, it's impossible to have two thoughts in your head at the same time. And so you can dwell like mental health people do. They can dwell on the worst, on what the fear and you can be so eaten up with fear that you can't even sleep at night because you're so afraid because your mind is is like a movie that you can't turn off you know you can't turn off that movie uh, i'm going to think about it again i don't want to go to sleep because i'm going to my mind's going to go right back into that thing you know into that horror area you know like when people see horrors of people being killed or you know or any any kind of horror things it, it's in your mind and it's on a on a reel and it, it's on a loop and it goes over and over and over again but if you do the cannabis but more than part more important more important the most important thing is think of god and when you think of god you develop, you have that access to that power. And when that power comes to you, 
and it comes to you. It's the prophet, or the poets call it the, the small, still voice. When that comes to you, then all your problems, they don't get resolved at once. It takes time, but they all crumble because for the most part, 90% of it, if not more, is in your mind. Your mind made it bigger and worse than it ever was. Like the nightmares. Nightmares, they don't exist, but they exist in your mind. It's like you got a television set on your mind that you can't turn off. But if you want to change the, the, the thing, and that's why the, there's different sects of the religions, you know, they, they teach the, the Jesus freaks and the and the the Muslims, you know, Muhammad, and, and all the prophets, you know. And what the Catholics did, they, they took a prophet and they made him a god, uh, you know. And, and, and Jesus himself said, no, I'm not a god. The Father within me does all the work. I'm right. just, I'm just the, the prophet, you know, that's all I am. And everything I can, this is what Jesus said, everything I can do, you can do. And by the way, Jesus wasn't this six foot handsome white guy with a beard, you know, and the right tan and the and the nice white robes. He was a little short brown guy. And we don't know what he looked like. But we can but we knew what was in his heart. Because what was in his heart and what he taught us, look at we're still talking about it. Right. Uh, how can uh, people find uh, your products? Because you have uh, hemp, CBD, and other things uh, right there on your website. Hey, Tommy Chong. And now, look at this. We got uh, Cheech and Chong delivery. Ding dong, it's Cheech and Chong. <laughs> and, and right now, you can go to a, to a website and you can order whatever whatever product you want. You know, you got to go through the, the ID, you know, you, you do all that. But we, that's what we did today because it was 420. We were around two houses that won the contest and we delivered in person. We delivered our product to them. It was so much fun. And the the first one that we went to, Christian, very, very Christian. They had their own church and, and the guy, you know, you know and I, I got kind of excited because, you know, I, I'm a church guy, as you can tell. And so we started talking and, and we had a little prayer the group, you know, they, they they prayed, you know, they're the the Christian thing, and and then right at the end, <laughs> he says something about uh, oh I can he says Should I, we're having a picture at the end of everybody and we're all taking pictures and the guy the the minister goes I got a Trump flag do you want should I bring my Trump flag out well if if there's anybody anti Trump it's me <laughs> and the guy was telling us that. The only thing they're short of because they're giving food to the to the homeless and the people that need it, and the, the needy. And the one thing that he says, what do you think is the most uh, sought after item going? And I couldn't think of it. He says diapers, <laughs> Di baby diapers. And so when he brought up the, the Trump uh, flag thing, I said, hey, there's your baby diapers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just want to tell people uh, to definitely check out uh, Tommy Chong's uh, site where he sells uh, uh, CBD holistic products. It's TommyChongsHemp.com. And uh, thank you so much. We'll have to make a habit of uh, talking uh, other times uh, outside of 420. I, I want to tell you that, that uh, I've got people now that, that call me up just for this reason, because, you know, when, when you unleash me, uh, you know, when you ask me about, you know, spiritual matters and that, uh, it, it's all bottled down. <laughs> it's all, all ready to pop up. My, my son walked in while we were talking. And, and, and by the way, it, it, uh, spiritual beliefs is so personal that I, I really don't share them with my wife or my son. Or, or any, anybody in the family, because they're all evolving at their own rate, you know. I, I've evolved. I've, I've come to this point. I'm, I'm at really, really at the twilight of my, my, my stay here. But, I'm, I'm, but when you ask me, because ask and you shall receive, you see. And so when you ask me, when you hit those different questions, man, 
it's all inside me. Well, I'm so glad to, to get it out there because uh, the, these are the only times I get to do it. Man. Absolutely. Thank you uh, so much, Tommy. I really appreciate it. Anytime. We'll see you. Thanks for watching and make sure to tune in to Status Coup's daily live stream Monday through Thursday at 5 o'clock Eastern Time and Fridays at 4 o'clock Eastern Time.